Rasputin, Big Red, the Tyrant. Some of the names the Warmind has been given over the years. But who exactly is Rasputin? His creation and purpose, the collapse, his absence, and the events of the Warmind expansion of Destiny 2 where we helped him stop a Warm God. Let's begin back during the Golden Age, an era in history around 700 years before the present day. We had made contact with the Traveler on Mars for the first time, and the Traveler began to terraform the different planets in our solar system, allowing for humanity to colonize it in its entirety. Humanity was thriving with the advances in technology we had learned from the Traveler. Clovis Bray was the scientist responsible for many of the scientific advances we see today, even after the collapse. He funded the Clovis Bray Exoscience Corporation with his son Clovis Bray II, and his grandkids, Alton, Willa, Elizabeth, and Anastasia. Alton wasn't a scientist, but holding an executive role in the corporation. Willa had similar beliefs as Grandpa Clovis. They believed Siva was the answer to immortality, and she's responsible for the invention of the engram. Elizabeth was a weapons and ships engineer, up until she joined Grandpa Clovis on Europa to help develop the EXO program in the Deepstone Crypt. And Anna Bray. She was a psycholinguist and helped the development of the warmind Rasputin, teaching it independent thought. And Russian. She died during the collapse. Rasputin began as a safety and diagnostics AI created pre-Golden Age, known simply as R, to help with the first Mars exploration missions. His duty was basic diagnostics like checking oxygen and fuel. With time and the beginning of the Golden Age, Clovis Bray took the code for R and implemented it into an interplanetary defense system, becoming Rasputin, the most powerful military intelligence ever developed. This is when Anna Bray assisted by teaching Rasputin language, uploading a massive amount of literature, philosophy, and music into his database. Rasputin's main core programming during the Golden Age was to protect humanity and come up with a solution to any threat in the horizon. His reach spreads throughout the entire system with the help of other submines created after him and located in other planets like the one on Earth, the Moon, and Io. He also created an exo with the sole purpose to go out into the world and interact with humans and collect information about them, like customs, culture, and behavior. This exo was killed during the collapse and will later become a guardian. Fell winter, but that could be its own video, there's so much there. Rasputin was the first to know the Collapse was coming. We now know the Collapse was brought to us by Nesarek, Disciple of the Witness, chasing after the Traveler. Every action Rasputin had taken up to this point to prevent the Collapse had failed, or had a 100% chance of failing with the arrival of the Darkness. So when he determined there was nothing he could do to prevent it, he rewrote his own core programming code from protection of humanity to long-term survival having himself and submines going dark, dormant, presumed dead. Even after Rasputin left humanity to fend for themselves, he placed an emergency protocol in case the Traveler ever attempted to escape and leave humanity to extinction. He would fire with all of his power at the Traveler, weakening him and forcing him to stay, protect humanity and protect himself. Of course, Rasputin had the knowledge of what the Traveler did to the Elixni before. The Collapse came, Nesarek invaded, death and destruction. The Traveler, protecting himself, blasted Nesarek and his pyramid ship with such power that killed Nesarek and his pyramid ship crashed into the moon. The Traveler, wounded after the attack, attempts to leave Earth and Rasputin Emergency Protocol kicks in, shooting the Traveler with all his power to prevent him from leaving, and it worked. The Traveler on his last breath creates and releases ghosts to search for worthy corpses to rise from the dead and become guardians of the Traveler, while the Traveler is weak and dormant. Anna Bray died during the collapse, but was resurrected by a ghost some time after. Even though new guardians risen have no memories of their past lives, Anna Bray died wearing her name badge, Dr. Anastasia Bray, Clovis Bray Exoscience Corporation which gave her enough information to find out her past. A past that brings her to Mars looking for the Clovis Bray facility and a dormant Rasputin. The Traveler has spent many years inactive until Gaul forced him to wake up during the Red War. Guardians fought the Hive and Crota on the moon, fought Oryx on the Dreadnought, 
and helped Lord Saladin when the Fallen stole Siva and enhanced himself in the Plaguelands. But when the Traveler woke, the powerful blast of light that reached every corner of the universe also reached Sol, the Worm God on Mars. But how did the Worm God end up on Mars? Okay, hear me out, it's a bit complicated. When Oryx went down beneath the Fundament to meet with Akka, one of the Worm Gods, and ended up killing Akka and creating the Tablets of Ruin which gave him the power to take. Zol became afraid that the other Worm God, Yul, would turn against him to kill him and become powerful enough to fight Oryx. Zol made a pact with Nocris, the exiled son of Oryx and brother of Crota. Together they left Fundament to find a new home which was Mars during the Collapse. Rasputin, while Dorman, detected Zol and Nocris attempting to corrupt the core of the planet. So a defense mechanism activated that Flash froze a big chunk of the planet, trapping Zol, Nocris, and all the Hive in ice. They stayed frozen until after the Red War and the Awakening of the Traveler. The ice began to melt, exposing Hive Redmans, which triggered another defense mechanism from Rasputin, crashing warsats all over the area to try and contain the Hive defrosting. And this is the beginning of the Warman expansion. Warsats crashing all over, Anna Brave fights through the Frosted Hive as she tries to reach the Clovis Brave facility to find out more about her past and Rasputin. This is when she contacted us asking for help. She knows about the Hive and the danger if they get to Rasputin. We land on Mars, we reach Anna, and head over to the Clovis Brave facility. She accesses a terminal to unlock the path to Rasputin's core, and we head there next. Fighting through hordes of Hive, we reach Rasputin's core as he activates the Valkyrie for us to use it in defending it. We clear the area and meet with the very upset Zavala inside. Hello, Guardian. Oh, Shanks. What do you think you're doing? Do you have any idea how dangerous this thing is? Rasputin is Vanguard business, Anastasia, not yours. You do not belong here. You don't understand the connection I share with Rasputin. Here, let me show you. Okay. We should... Rasputin was not the only thing to awaken on Mars. Anna and Zavala know about Zol and the pact the Hive made with the Worm Gods, so in order to lure Zol out, we need some bait. Zavala thinks of a fragment of the Traveler that's on the EDZ. It landed there after Gol's attack, and it would be really hard for Zol to resist it. So we head over to the EDZ to retrieve this fragment of the Traveler and bring it back to Mars. The fragment is guarded by Taken, with a Taken shield on it, so Anna uses one of Rasputin Warsats in orbit to take the shield down and we get it back to Mars. The next step is to find Zol's feeding place, so we begin the search down in the caverns. A variation of the Strange Terrain Strike. We reach the end, meet Nocris, and place the lure after we defeat him. Zol shows up and wants to have words with us. We learn that Sol is headed towards Rasputin Neural Network, so it's time for the Will of the Thousand Strike. We end Sol with the power of the Valkyrie and head back to have a chat with Rasputin. And that concludes the Warman expansion. Since then, we had the Season of the Worthy, where Rasputin kept tracking the Pyramid ships approaching. And we did millions of Seraph Tower public events to help him create satellites to stop the Almighty from crashing on the last city. The season ended on an epic live event of a Rasputin shooting down the Almighty. Then the pyramids arrived and took over half of her destinations including Mars. As Anna Bray escaped Mars, she took whatever was left of Rasputin inside of an engram before he was completely shut down by the witness. As of the making of this video, Anna Bray is still working on getting Rasputin back, hopefully into an exobody. It was incredibly difficult to summarize Rasputin into a 10 minute video, so I had to skip some parts, but I did my best. 
I have similar videos about the Red War, Curse of Osiris and Forsaken if you're interested. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you feel I've earned your follow. I want to thank you all for your viewership, my name is Tavius Plays, and if you want to watch other informative Destiny 2 videos, you can click here. Light on one side, dark on the other. Where do you stand? Arc.